Matthew chapter 9. You might want to put your, we're going to go over to Mark chapter 2 this morning also, which is the same event, but a different angle. Okay, that's what the Gospels are for. You get to look this way, you get to look this way. Sometimes one says one thing, uh, gives more uh, detail. Uh, one is more worried about maybe a chronological piece. Remember, uh, Matthew is the book written about a king, the Messiah, the line of the Messiah, the king of the Jews. So Mark chapter 9, and uh, let's, let's read the, the, the passage first. It says in Mark chapter, um, excuse me, Matthew, excuse me, Matthew, 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 Matthew. We're in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 9. Verse number 1. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsies, Son, be of good cheer, of thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Father, bless thy word this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, here's, a, here's a man that uh, will be dealing with the sick of the palsy and his brothers. And you'll notice it says, he, And he entered into a ship, and he passed over, came to the other side, or, or to, a, a, to this area, his own city, which is uh, Capernaum. That's his own city. Uh, he was in Nazareth, which Nazareth uh, he started out in. That's where he wanted to be, but they didn't accept him. See, a prophet isn't accepted in his own his own by his own people, you know. Uh, uh, just uh, according to myself, I, I, I grew up in Philadelphia. I couldn't go back there to preach uh, and start a ministry. I had caused so much havoc there uh, that, uh, and my testimony's dead. So uh, I'm here. Uh, I could probably go back and talk to some people or whatever, but uh, God called me here. Amen. So well, I'm here, Amen. and. Um, so he goes back into his area. You know, you have a you have a heart for your own people. I know for myself, when I started uh, uh, preaching and pastoring, I started sending out uh, messages to people to apologize to them, to tell them I was sorry for the way I treated people years ago. And uh, it actually worked. People had contacted me back. I was able to lead some people to Christ from my hometown. Uh, and uh, also, I preached a funeral down there once. Uh, for an old, um, an old master sergeant that was one of my best friends when I was in the service, and um, he had no preacher there, so they asked me to preach. Uh, when they found out I was, you know, uh, a preacher, they had me preach, which is what I prayed for, because I had never given them the gospel as their commander, and I was able to give the gospel out, and three of my soldiers that were years ago got saved. So, uh, you know, uh, the Lord gave, the Lord sometimes likes to, uh, he likes to give some good blessings, and that was a great blessing for me. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. So uh, he says, and behold, they brought him, uh, they, behold, they brought to him, uh, you notice how they're coming to him? Uh, Jesus sets up, see, people have this tendency to think that because Jesus hung around with sinners, and he hung around with uh, uh not exactly the greatest people all the time. People think like he went down to their areas. No, he 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 went somewhere. He he went like the Sermon on the Mount. He set himself up on the Mount, and they came to him. 
He says, come unto me. That, see, he doesn't get anything if he was just to run down there and go unto him. But you've got to understand something. The beautifulness of God is he doesn't have to, and he does. He, he always says, if you come part of the way, I'm going to come more. Believe me, how far you come, God comes millions of miles further. Uh, he, has more, he, he has more thought to you than you have of yourself. And uh, you'll notice some things here. He, he, it, they, brought it to, they brought him to, uh, to Jesus, and it says, in Jesus seeing their faith, and most of this, it says, it says they brought him a man sick of the palsy, but he saw their faith. So there must have been more than one, and it was a, something that he saw in the room or in the air that changed him, that changed Jesus Christ right there. Uh, because he said he seen their faith. He saw seeing their faith said unto the sick and the, of the palsy, a son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. So Jesus responds. See, he sees their faith and he responds to faith. That's how God responds. He responds to faith at times and, and, and reveals things and um, this is, uh, this is salvation uh, is more important. You have to understand something. He didn't heal him yet. No, look what it says. He forgave his what? Sins. He, he didn't get up and walk right there. He didn't heal him. Forgiveness of sins doesn't mean that your body gets better. Forgiveness of sins is something spiritual. And it's on the inside and, and just goes away. But the outside's still the same. Amen? Uh, the same thing with uh, you. Uh, you got saved, but you sure, uh, had the, you sure had some things you did in the past that still come rolling up after you. Yeah. Amen? Amen? There's some. You have to understand something. Your character has to be worked with after that. You got saved, but you still have same tendencies. You still have the same. Uh, you're still the. You still have those same fleshly things that uh, you keep dragging along. We call it baggage. And and let's face it, people. Uh, we're a people of baggage. I'm not talking physical. I'm talking mental, spiritual things like that. You know, you keep carrying them away. The problem that you have is that Jesus is trying after that to sanctify you to kick that baggage away, and you put the thing on rollers and gets makes it easier to bring it. You should make your baggage a little harder to bring. But what, ha what I said is you, you, like to, you like to grab all your stuff and you say, well, you know, it's hard to move this stuff and, uh, and, and roll it down the way. I can't get it on the plane, can't get it. And then what happens? That atomic muscle uh, spirit that you have of man just turns around and says, give me that stuff. And, and you grab a tote, uh, one of those tote things on wheels, you put all the stuff on there, and then you made it easier, and you walk down the road and bring it to the next person, and you dump it on them. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So, uh, but they, he saw them, and he says, be of good cheer. Now, I want to show you some other things that happened here. Let's go over to Mark chapter uh, 2. Mark chapter 2. Sometimes it's good to have bookmarks so you can put it in Matthew and then go over to Mark so you don't have to keep just your finger in there. And in Mark chapter 2, uh, the Bible says, uh, and again he entered into Capernaum. You see, Mark, I wasn't the smart guy that figured out his own city. The Bible did it. I just watched it. You know what I mean? It's that easy. It's his own city. It's Capernaum. That's where the synagogue was. And it says he entered into this Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. You think maybe that's where they got that saying, Jesus is in the house? <laughs> Amen? Amen? And straightway, many were gathered straightway. They came to him. I mean, they didn't even go another way. Didn't uh, uh, They didn't go a rabbit trail. It says straightway. They had a purpose to see him. They had a purpose here. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much. As, uh, as about the door, and he preached the word unto 
them. Uh, Jesus shows up. I mean, how do you how do you hide a man who's walking down the road and, and people are getting healed? I mean, think about this, people. Jesus comes into town. There's no need for health insurance. Just run to him. I mean, if a guy came into town and there was and he started healing, I bet you the first person that had cancer that got healed start telling everybody. I guarantee you that hospital would empty out. And there'd be people running over to Jesus. And that's what's happening. You can't hide a man like that. And it says that. They couldn't even get in the house anymore. There was people probably outside waiting to get in. Hey, look, i got to tell you something. If my child was sick, I'm getting in there. That's my place in there. Why? Because she's important to me. She's important to me. If, if my wife, something's wrong, I'm getting in there. I'll carry her in there. I, I don't care. I just need Jesus. And the people were at the door. Now watch 3. Verse 3 in Mark chapter 2. It says, And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Now there's five guys there. He's on a bed. One guy on each corner. Amen? Amen? One man's on each corner of this uh, bed. You don't know how that bed is. We don't know what kind of bed it is. I would assume uh, he's on like a mattress or something like that. Not, not the fluffy stuff, but something like, you know, they used to use back then, uh, weaved out, and, and they're all carrying him in. That's the bed he sleeps on at night. Amen? Easy that way. He was born of Ford, it says, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, that crowd that's there, they're thronging, they uncovered the what? Roof. Roof. Where he was. Watch. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And then the owner came in and saw his roof torn apart. And he starts screaming, what did you do to my house? You notice how that's not in there? Yeah. You know why? Because Jesus is more worried about people than he is buildings. Yeah. That's right. Now you'll notice some, something else here. His brothers didn't care. Hey, do you have a permit to, ju to justify what you're doing? I don't care. When they drove, when they brought Jesus in, when Jesus came in on the donkey with the two, the two donkeys, the mother and the uh, mother and the colt, and he comes into town, and they're just bringing him in. People are breaking off trees, having a parade, and everything else. Where's their permit? Hey, let me. If you would have done that somewhere in a city or something, they'd have come out. The leaders of the town, they'd have, they'd have come out. Where's your permit? They were climbing trees, breaking. Whose trees are that? They're just breaking branches off of trees. You have to understand something. They don't care. When it comes to the worship of the Lord and the lifting Him up, sometimes you've got to not care. Sometimes you're in a store and there's people there and you're walking down the aisle. And then all of a sudden you, you hear from two, two uh, aisles down, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. You know why you hear that person singing? Because that person doesn't care what anybody else has to say. Amen. If they're going to worship God, they'll do it wherever and whenever. That's the difference. These guys that are there, they got a purpose. Nothing's going to stop them. Even a roof ain't going to stop them. The crowd didn't stop them. I want to, I want to get to Jesus. And they start breaking up the roof. Now look what, it, look what it says. They break up the roof and it says and when, uh, when they had broken it up, they let down the bed. Verse, verse 4. Wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Now look. When Jesus saw what? Their faith. A, a people. He's looking up at the roof. And the bed is coming down. He can't see the faith of the guy on the bed. He can only see the bed. What Jesus sees is their faith. What's that? Those brothers that are up there. 
They got a look on their face that they don't care. They're putting that brother of theirs down. Jesus is here, and we want our family all ready. Amen. Boy, oh boy, could we like to see that stuff today. Amen. People who, who would, uh, well, i got to get my, my son. He's got, he's got Down syndrome. Well, where are you going? I'm going down to local church house. I hear there's a preacher down there that makes a call for salvation. My son needs to get saved. Boy, would there be something great if somebody just bring their kids in here and hear the gospel and get saved. Amen. When you see their faith coming through the door, Jesus says, that's it. We can't even get people that are down in the dumps. There's crack houses. They're anywhere. I go in the crack house, they get mad at me. Not even realizing that what they have right there is an ambassador for Jesus Christ that just walked into their house. That's the evil world we live in today. Go back to Matthew. He, they, he saw their faith. Imagine, you think it's always about the faith of the person that's being healed. Hey, look, could you imagine you go to Benny Hinn or whoever those weirdos are, they want to touch everybody, make signs, all this other stuff that isn't, that God's like, that ain't going to do much in the end. That, you're just going to look for more magic tricks. And uh, things, things are, are going on, and then they, they couldn't, uh, they have a person come up, and he, he has the palsy, and, and there's, that, there's that white suit sitting there, in there going, what am I going to do? And then all of a sudden he tries, and nothing. Get, don't get up. He tries again. Nothing happens walks away and he says, well, that guy didn't have much faith. It wasn't about that guy. It was about you. You're the problem. Why? Because we just read that it wasn't about the palsy guy's faith. It was about Jesus Christ. And then the faith he saw in those brothers. So it wasn't about the person. It was about what was around the person. Amen? You know, there was a lady at the well. Jesus just impressed her. And she got saved, looking for the Messiah. She ran into town, and you know what she said? Come see a man. No elaborate. No wages of sin is death. If the God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. There was no preaching that she had to really do. Just come see a man. Just come see a man. Just please, just come see. It, it, look, I'm, I'm a man, but I'm not the, the one you need to go to see. I'm just a guy in the way. Sometimes we need to be in the way. See, you think of in the way means I just need to get out of the way. Sometimes you need to be in the way. Why? Because you're getting in the way between them and the world. Chapter 9, nine back in Matthew. He wasn't healed yet. It says, verse number uh, 3, it says, Behold, the certain scribes within themselves, this man blasphemeth. This man blasphemeth. And, and it says, in Jesus, knowing their thoughts... Uh, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? He sees faith and he, and, and he sees evil in other people's hearts. And that's what he's looking at in the room. You got a few people who, got, who just took a, uh, went outside and grabbed a handful of gravel and just stuck it in their mouth and said, Let me, let, let me now go back in. Same thing today, huh? Great things are happening and things of faith are happening and there's always that guy on the other side that's got a problem. I mean, I've seen it in churches actually. I'm not talking amongst the unsaved. I'm talking amongst the saved. People getting saved and there's that one guy. See, he's not leading anybody to Christ. He, he's, just, he's just upset because guess what? He ain't living right. And he's a critical spirit because 
he's upset that God isn't blessing him like he's blessing that person over there or doing something for that person over there. You know what he says? How do you know these people are saved? How do you know these people are saved? We had one time a, a bunch of kids get saved. We had one time this kid from another country come in and he could barely speak much English. And they tried, they tried every message and every message. To, to They were preached and preached and preached and the kid didn't get saved. And then one lady goes over uh, during, uh, during mid-between services or whatever and speaks to this guy and he gets saved right there. And there goes Mr. Gravel Mouth. How do you know he's saved? We don't see anything. Well, why would you see anything? It's something that happened on the inside. So you, you try to deal with this. And then they say, well, there was no emotion. And the joke came up. Well, what are we supposed to do? Run around with a bat and just beat people with it so they cry? I know people that got saved just by going like this in the door. And then I've seen them. They actually serve God today. I believe that. I believe that now. I believe that now. I had a guy in the hospital just before he died say to me, I believe that now. I believe that now. And that, you would think, well, he didn't show much emotion. He couldn't have been saved. That same man started yelling in the room for his wife to come in and get saved. Started yelling for his kids to come in and get saved. And never once did he yet shed a tear. But I'll tell you what, he sure got saved. You know what the problem on that piece is? You ain't the authority on who got saved and who didn't get saved. That's up to the Lord. He'll make sure it's known because he'll keep that word of God going to that person as long as they're willing. Amen? Amen. Jesus knew their heart. He knew their thoughts. Wherefore, think ye evil in your hearts. Uh, go over to Isaiah chapter 12. Show you something in there. I had brought this up in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 12. And um, let's look at uh, let's look at verse number, I think it's yet. Yeah. Verse number 1. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Now watch this. Behold, God is my salvation. Can I get an amen there? Amen. amen. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah. Notice all capitals. I want you to know something. It's, uh, Jehovah is capitalized in the Old Testament four times. If you go to the New Testament, Jesus is capitalized four times. What's God trying to show you? Jesus is Jehovah. Amen? Amen. Jehovah, Jesus means Jehovah saves. Uh, but look here, it says, now watch this. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. Now, if we did go to a Masoretic text, if we did get it in Hebrew, salvation in, uh, in Hebrew is Yeshua. Yeshua. That's Jesus. God is my Yeshua. God is my Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's, they, they didn't know He gave them their name in the Old Testament. They didn't even know Him. He shows up. He's got everything in order. He's from the tribe of Judah. I mean, I guarantee you, I know Jewish people. I've been around them. I'm not being weird or anything, you know. I'm just telling you, I've been around them. Uh, a lot. They're great with numbers. They're great accountants. I mean, let's face it, they're great lawyers. They're, they're you know, we, we say these things. That if you want a good lawyer, go get a... You want a good accountant, go get Melvin over there. Go get that guy. Why? They're just, that. They, let's face it, people, they have it. 
they had the right diet years ago. They had the right things. It, it, just worked. it just works that way. They were blessed by God by giving them. What advantage do they have? They had the scriptures way before everybody else, and they had contact with God. What advantage? Come on, that's a lot of advantage. Amen? They got a whole instruction manual on how to be healthy, how to worship, and how to, and who to, how to know God. Yeah, sure, they got an advantage over you. And sure enough, in history, it shows itself. The average IQ is 127 for that people. Man, that's, that, that's well above anybody, any other peoples that are on this earth. Where was he born? Well, he supposed Messiah, Micah chapter 5, 2, he's supposed to be born in Bethlehem. But that guy, uh, Jesus, yeah, yeah, he was born in Bethlehem. Well, he's supposed to be of the tribe of Judah. Yeah, he, he's of the tribe of Judah. Ah, uh, wait a second here. Oh, uh, what, 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 what's it? We got to get something else. Uh, uh, oh, I got it. No prophet comes out of Galilee. You know what they didn't do? They never read their Bible because Jonah came out of there. You know what else they would say? Oh, wait a second about this guy. Elijah's the first that's supposed to show up first. And he ain't here yet. This guy can't be the Messiah. You know what they did? They missed it all. They missed it all. Jesus Knowing their thoughts, wherefore you think evil. Why are you thinking evil when something, something's happening here? These guys, this is a great event. Look at this guy's face. Look at them. They're bringing their brother down. It says, for whether it is easier to say. Here's his, here's his comment. What's easier to say here? Whether easier to, to, uh, is easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and walk. Well, what if he didn't walk? What is it easier to say? Hey, uh, is it easier to say, uh, hey, you remember that, remember that stuff that happened between you and I? I, I forgive you for it. What's easier? To say that or to say arise up and walk? What if he doesn't? We got a bad day going, ain't we? Mm -hmm. right. It's kind of hard, easier to say, just I forgive you. Forgive your sins. Verse 6, but that ye may know. You notice how it says no? It didn't say so that you can get information. That ye may know. Here's the facts. That ye may know that the Son of Man hath power. He's got power. He's got power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise. Take up thy bed, walk. Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy, unto thine house. He says, uh, you're, you notice how he didn't say learn how to walk again? This guy's been since his birth, and Jesus is already, think of this. This is something people don't think of. Not only does he heal the guy, he injects the information of how to walk into him. See, you only saw the one miracle where he strengthened his muscles. Uh, we we kind of uh, we kind of see the movies where he uh, touches the guy, and all of a sudden the guy's legs start to get from stiff. They start to get muscle, and they start to grow a little, and everything. And then the guy gets up. That's what happened. He said he got up immediately. And he starts walking around. He hasn't learned how to walk yet. Now, if he didn't learn how to walk yet, how could he have walked? He gave me information, too. I mean, you don't have a baby, and as soon as the muscles are okay, you don't turn around, let, it go, let the baby... You've got to teach the baby to walk. Yeah. Hold its hands, and you... Do the old thing. Hey, look, uh, never let that one. I'll tell you what, if some baby was, if, 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 my, if my baby would have been uh, ready to walk at a young age or something like that, and she could have walked before I did it, let me tell you something, she'd be restricted. I'd be like making her do it. <laughs> Why? Because I want to do it. <laughs> but they need, 
to learn how to walk. You need to learn how to walk as a Christian, don't you? You didn't, you didn't uh, get saved and all of a sudden uh, you think you did. You're out there trying to tell there's some other person he's witnessing to and there you are sitting there, oh, I, I, I don't know how to get saved. You don't know a thing and you're sitting there trying to explain something you don't even know yet. Amen. Because you didn't learn. Because that's man. But Jesus, he is more. He's man, but he's more than man. But you'll notice something in there. Looking in verse number 6, Jesus says, But that ye may know that the Son of Man... You notice He uses that more than anything. He always uses Son of Man. Yeah. He doesn't say that the Son of God. He says the Son of Man. You see, the one that this is why He wants you to understand something. He relates to you. I'm a man. I relate to you. Look, I'm a man. I'm trying to, st to save mankind. I'm a man. I'm just like you right now. I'm a man. He's trying to tell them. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power. Power on the earth to forgive sins. You notice how he didn't say just heal? They're looking for healings and everything else. And he says, I got the power over sins. And they don't understand that power. Why? Because they murmur again. They murmured, he blasphemed. Uh, but when the multitude, verse 8, but when the multitude saw, saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Uh, it's the power of sickness versus the power over sin. I think the greater one is over sin. Amen. Amen. Verse number 9 goes into a different incident here. Right over to a different incident. It says, and, and, Jesus, and as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of customs. And he saith unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. Uh, I mean, here's an incident right here where you got a guy named Matthew. Now, uh, if you go in other areas, he has another name. What's that? Lee, Levi, right? Matthew is Levi. Uh, Matthew is, is from the tribe of what? Come on, Judah. we're pretty easy. Huh? Judah. Matthew. Levi, his name is. <laughs> Amen? Named after one of the father of his people, his tribe. Amen? Uh, now think about this. If he's a Levite, where's he supposed to be? Priest. He's supposed to be a priest. Somewhere in some area, he's supposed to be a priest, and he's supposed to be uh, working and serving the people, and here he is. He's a tax collector. Instead of serving the people, what's he doing? Getting a cut? Yeah. See, how it works, how it worked back then is they paid up front, and then they went and collected money, and whatever they collected over the amount, that's theirs. That's how they made money. These guys were making money hand over fist. I mean, it's going out in strong arm. And I mean, come on, tax collecting over there. If you think about it, kind of like the mob. Mm -hmm. They're putting a little skim on the top of the taxes to collect some money. You say, what, where did what, what, anybody learn from that example? Sure, our government did. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they have fees and fees and fees and fees upon fees. Yeah. I mean, man, you get a ticket, you look on there, you, the ticket costs like 30 bucks and the fees and everything else equal like 130 afterwards. Yeah, that's right. Who's making a buck here? You got the county making money, you got the state making money. Everybody's making money on that thing. Everybody's getting a piece of it. One little fun, it's just split up. And everybody got just gets, gets their hands involved. The town, the county, the state, everybody wants a, wants a hit. So, uh, Matthew's sitting there, Levi sitting there. He's a, he's a Levite. He's not got the wrong thing. I mean, you ever think of maybe he saw what was going on down there at the temple? He saw how the Levites live? I mean, look at how the Pharisees came into, they came into power with the Maccabees back uh, be, just before Christ comes, and they're taking everything over. They're like acting like lawyers in there. The whole system's all messed up. 
Jesus shows up, and by the time he shows up, Matthew's out there collecting taxes and not caring about being a Levite and getting the inheritance and getting a getting it down at the temple, uh, the money and everything. He's sitting there saying, I've had enough of this religion. See, that's what happens to our kids. We dwell them in and we get them in and we make it like soldier stuff. We make it we turn around like a must system. We turn around and make it into a religion and you know what? They get tired of it. They get tired of it. You try to make religion into a thing of happiness instead of a thing of joy. Happiness is temporary. Joy goes further. We need to make it into a joy thing for kids. I, I think it's like this. Take the happiness of the world from them and make them rely on the joy of the Savior. So, he, uh, he, he leaves them. He, he, he has him and he, he says... He was sitting at the receipt of customs. Custom. Uh, we have that today. When somebody comes in from uh, another country, what do we do? We sit, they, they have to go through customs. He's sitting over, over there at the sea, and uh, I would assume there may, may, I guess maybe there are travelers that come in, and he has to put a duty on something. And he has to collect for them. And uh, Jesus has probably been up there many a time. Probably passed by many a time. Because He's there, and it's kind of like it's familiar if you look in other portions of uh, Mark and stuff. When he turns around, he says, come follow me. And he gets up immediately and follows him. Now, I could go down the road right here to any place. Uh, somebody is sitting there selling Girl Scout cookies. Walk up uh, and just walk up and say, hey, follow me. Walk away. You think they're coming? No. They're not familiar with me. And I got nothing to offer, not even joy or anything. You know, that's the difference. Jesus is coming by, and he's coming by that receipt of customs. And he probably be was saying, hey, Matthew, how you doing? Hey, Matthew, how's things going? Wait a second, my name is Levi. I call you Matthew. He passed forth, uh, and man, he was named Matthew. He said at the receipt of customs, he saith unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. Leave the money right there. I don't care. Just go and, I mean, you would do that. Uh, uh, I mean, if, what, basically, if somebody came up and Jesus came up and said, follow me, and all of a sudden, you, 20 bucks falls out of your pocket. Hold on a second, Jesus. Well, what do you want that for? Well, I, gotta pay, I might have to pay for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd probably be better off. You provided this. I don't. I want to be a good steward of it. That would be a better saying, wouldn't it? But uh, verse number ten, and it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him, and and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master? with publicans and sinners. Now, we know one thing, because it says in 10, it says, and it came to pass, Jesus sat at meat at, in the house. Be, behold, the publicans and the sinners came and sat down with him. Uh, Matthew's local, because this is his house. So he's a local guy right here. And you know what a, this local guy has? This local guy gets saved. You know what he has? He has a heart for his friends. And he turns around and makes a party. And he invites Jesus. He wants a preacher there. I want my friends to get saved. And that's how Matthew basically looks at it. Let me bring my friends in. And now let me bring a preacher in to speak to my friends. I had that happen a few times. A guy invites me to his house. My wife and I didn't know even what it was for, if you remember. We rode up on the motorcycle. And it was a cookout. And at the time, the, the gentleman had just gotten saved in here. And he got us to the cookout, and, and uh, he turned around, gathered up everybody. He says, nobody touches the food until he speaks. And he says, go ahead, preacher. And I got up. I was able to give the gospel. I think one girl got saved. I can't remember. But you see, he invited his friends, and then he brought the preacher in. 
At least he cared about his friends. Now he says, uh, they question up and he says, and when the Pharisees saw, you see how it is? They just see things. They're spectators. They're not doing anything for the Lord. They're just spectators. And the Pharisees, they saw at their critical minds, uh, they said unto his disciples, you notice how they didn't go face to face with him? They went down the chain. Let me go talk to them. Well, maybe I'll get a hold of them. Obviously, that guy ain't going to listen. So I'm going to go to his friends. Maybe I can knock away some things here. And they went to, where? to his friends, his disciples. Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? Why is he hanging around with them? You know the funny part about that is? He wasn't hanging around with them. It's not like he turned around and went to their houses and said, come on out. He just went to a saved guy's house, Matthew, and sat there and, and went to the, they had a party there. But when Jesus heard that, verse 12, be said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I mean, there's God looking down, and you know what? You think he sees this, and you think he sees that, and, and God sees two different people. He sees one lost, and he sees one saved. That's how God sees it when he looks down. He's not in yet. He just looks down. I mean, there's two thieves on the cross, and one saved, one's not. You don't know which one is, but God knows. That's how God sees you. Got what? You got a whole bunch of thieves down here, and God looks and He goes, "Well, one thief is saved, one thief, one thief is not." You say, "Well, is, you think God looks at me like a thief?" Maybe you should. How many here have ever a, a, ever thanked God for the air they breathe? If you haven't, you're a thief. It's His air. Amen. You bring it in, you change it, and put it out. You've even altered what God had. Maybe you should thank Him for, your, for the air you breathe. Amen? Amen? Them that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye, go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repent. Repentance. I'm not looking for works, people. That's what God's saying. I'm not looking for works. You know what? You're trying to impress me. Oh, yeah, God, look at me. Look at what I'm doing. Look at this. Look at that good. Look at that. Uh, remember Elijah? I'm the only one out there. I'm the only one in there. What's God saying? i got 7,000 more out there. I'm not looking for your works. You know why? Because when I start, you, you're saying it for like you're trying to impress me. You act like I owe you something. Why? I owe you to be impressed. Look, you can do that to me and you can do that to others, but don't do that to the Lord. He never says, O ye of great works. O ye. He looks for faith. He says, learn. Learn what that meaneth. That, 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 that those who need a physician, those who are not whole, they need the physician. Those that are sick. What's the sickness? The sin. They know they can't get over. I'm a publican. I'm a sinner. I already know it. When they're talking, it, it's, I mean, look, I, I, told, I, I bring it up. People in prison, they get saved more than people that get that around here. Why? They, get, they know they got caught. I went over to Mark. You know what he says? He says, I was, a, I, I, I was a burglar. I was a thief. I got caught. I'm in here 20 years. Why? Because I got caught being a burglar. You know what? The best thing about that is he understood he was a thief. He, I remember him saying to us uh, when we were sitting there, I, I'm not even a good one. Why? I got caught. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Just so you know, you ain't a good thief either. You got caught. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. It's, he's not looking for works here. And you have to understand, it's God's work that are needed. He says, I am come not to call the righteous. Why? Because I want sinners to repentance. 
God's work is the thing that is needed real fast. Let's go over to Romans chapter 4. We'll end here. Romans chapter 4. Uh, you are all pretty uh, familiar with this passage. It's in 1 to 4. Verse number 1. What, what shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? This is what he found. Everything under the sun, this is the best. He, this is what he found out right here. This is Abraham. And he was a worker. Listen to how this says it. Because people don't look at that part that says pertaining to the flesh hath found. Everything under the sun, this is what he found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. God's not looking for works. Watch. For what saith the scripture, amen? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That belief was counted for righteousness, not the work he was doing. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Now if God was to turn around, if it was of works, if you could do one thing, you understand God owes you. That's what that's saying. That's why it can never be works. It's not works anywhere in that Bible. I hear it all the time. It's not works. It's not works. It's not works. Why? It's always an if afterwards. You got faith and then you can work. It's got to be faith. What about the Old Testament we told about? What about the rich young ruler? We use the same thing out there when we witness. You know the law. Did you keep the law? What did the guy do? He goes right into the social ones. Just like every... I'm not a murderer. Who cares about that? David was. It's the other portion. What's that? Do you love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might, with all thy soul? Do you love him that way? That's what counts. The first four. Why? Because they're going to bring you to the Lord. The first four commandments. Actually, the first one will take you all the way there. Amen? That's how powerful they are. Amen. That's what we're looking at. Uh, he says, verse number uh, 4, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, trust, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Amen. That's what God's looking for. For. What's that? Faith. Belief. Then you can work. But get the belief down first. Amen? Get saved. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for our time. Thank you for good Sunday school. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.